Hello, welcome to the New Stack Makers, a podcast where we talk about at scale application development, deployment, and management. This episode of the New Stack Makers is sponsored by Raygun. Raygun provides full stack error crash and performance monitoring for tech teams. If you're concerned you're losing customers to poor quality online experiences, Raygun provides you with the answers. Raygun surfaces errors and performance problems into a dashboard and gives you the actionable information you need to solve them before they reach your customers. Raygun has created a special offer for the Newstack listeners. Head to raygun.com forward slash TNS to get up and running and claim your free gift today. Hey, it's Alex Williams of the New Stack here in Shanghai for KubaCon plus Cloud Native Con. And I'm here with Henry Zhang and Paul Dull of VMware. How are you? Oh, pretty good, thanks. Yeah, Gr- doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you, Paul. Henry, it's our first time meeting. Yeah. We're talking about Harbor. And Henry, you're the you're really the force behind Harbor. Tell us what is Harbor? What is it? And and why is why is it important now? Yeah. Harbor is basically a Container management, uh, re- uh, image management registry. So we allow uh, people to manage container image uh, by using uh, the features like uh, access control, uh, replication, and as well as the uh, 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 vulnerability scanning. All kinds of security features uh, that will and people need for the enterprise use. Okay. Um, Enterprises have lots of demands upon their infrastructure, and the CIOs are very wary about how their infrastructure is being deployed, how it's being managed. What is what is Harbor's fit with that infrastructure that a CIO has inside their enterprise? I mean, the key thing is the security. Most of the CIO will worry about the security of their infrastructure, so how secure their infrastructure can be and how they make them uh, no no trouble on the security of the infrastructure. So yeah. what is, okay, go. Yeah, w- one of the great things about Harbor is it allows you to have the registry behind the firewall, right? So as opposed to going out to Docker Hub or a publicly hosted registry, you are able to have a curated uh, registry with, uh, with curated images that are sit behind the firewall so you have a lot more control over it. And then Harbor's got some great security features as well. So it's got uh, CVE scanning, for example, um, and then image signing and uh, and validation of signed images. Okay, so we see lots of registries in the market. They don't have these capabilities? So um, they they have these uh, capabilities. Harbor is open source, uh, which is a, a great advantage, and so it's got a great adoption in the open source community. Um, and so, and it's really focused on Kubernetes, whereas some of the other registries may have a broader focus. Uh, the Harbor focus is really to be the best registry for Kubernetes. Why did you start it? What ha- tell me about those days when you develop, were developing Harbor. Okay. Yeah, about, about four years ago, when the t- container technology is relatively new, not many people are using container technology. And the software there at that time is not so mature enough. So uh, when I attending some meetup or conference, I often see people that uh, they are uh, using their own way to manage container images, all kinds of hacking, all kinds of workarounds. So at that time, we think we might have be able to do something to create a common tool for people to use. That's how we initiate a prototype in our VMware China R&D center for our developer to manage container images. And then gradually, we have some feedback and then improve the product, and then we open source it for other people to use it. What was it that you saw in Harbor that you had that you hadn't seen elsewhere when you were starting to when you were like when you first saw it, Paul? Yeah, well, again, we're dealing with enterprise customers and they wanted to be able to have more control over their images. And so some of the key things with Harbor was one, the fact that it can be a private registry as opposed to a right. public registry. Uh, to the, the uh, vulnerability scanning, which is very, very important. But there's lots of vulnerability scanners out there that are open source, aren't there? 
yes. so yeah, and in fact, we, we leverage them, but it's the integration of these together. Right? Ah. So, for example, Harbor leverages Clear, which Hen yeah. Henry can tell you about, but uh, it's the integration and it's the entire package. What's Clear? Maybe for everyone out there, what is Clear? I, I, I'm not very familiar with it myself. Clear is another open source project that's uh, doing the vulnerability scanning task. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, where where is the development right now? What is it that you that you've done to this point, and where do you want to take it going forward? Yeah. For now, um, we can just uh, improving uh, the, the the registry for more uh, better user experience. As Paul said, we also want to make it more uh, reliable and more useful for the Kubernetes. Uh, uh, users. Yeah, I think a good proof point of that is uh, we've recently added support for Helm charts. All right, so Helm is gaining in pro popularity, and uh, we found from our users that they would really like to see support for Helm charts, and so that's something that, that we've added. And then additionally, we're working on other capabilities around scalability and high availability. So tell me about how it integrates with something like Helm. Um, for Helm, it's like uh, originally, the developer need to use Helm to deploy their application, and the Helm chart is a bunch of files on the disk. You need to m have a way to store them, and there's no better way to manage them. So we managed to uh, put the Helm charts with the container image together to be a consistent management system with within Harbor. That's how the user can uh, check their Helm chart and check their container image together, and to 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 then deploy to to the to the to the, to the Kubernetes cluster. Anything you'd add to that, Paul? No, no, I, I think that, that captures it pretty well. But you know, as Helm is gaining in, in popularity, it presents some of the same challenges that you'd have with container images. You need a way to, to manage them. And I think that Harbor is a great way to do that. Where do you want to take this? So, where, what, so like you, you've integrated Helm, right? So um, into it, and that is becoming kind of a way to, to build out those templates, so to speak. Helm is a template platform, correct? And so the container registry with, a, with, with Helm then allows them people to have those templates then verified to some extent, have them certified as well. Is it, does it help with the, with the, with the templates themselves or, or what exactly is the, the capability there? Yeah, so it's not so much the, uh, uh, the, the verification of the templates, but it's more management, right? Having uh, some place where you can keep them, keep them organized, and as Henry mentioned, have them tightly coupled with the images that they themselves are invoking. Okay. Yeah, because the Helm chart usually have, has referred to some kind of container images, which are usually stored in Harbor, so that we manage the, the, the Helm trust in, inside Harbor, so that the two things can reference each, to each other, so that they know it become an entity, the whole entity so that we can easier for management, for usage. So how would you do it otherwise if you didn't have this capability? Then you meant to have Helm Trust somewhere, one place, and you have Image in the other place. <laughs> so you need to work with two places. So I keep switching. One what what happens in situations like that? Very trouble and easy to get wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and we've seen it go wrong, haven't we? I mean, Kubernetes can be quite, quite porous if you're not careful. Yeah, well, I mean, Kubernetes has tremendous potential, but a lot of it comes down to the implementation, right? It's a plug-in architecture, and the way that you implement can, uh, I think, dramatically uh, affect the way that the the uh, the porosity, to use your words, of it. So, so, so maybe then this would help, kind of like um, me understand a little bit more, and maybe our listeners. Tell me about the architecture underneath underneath Harbor. You know, what is that technology infrastructure that you've built? Could you kind of talk about it uh, in terms of what it is that you, what is the technical underpinnings of the technology itself? Um, in term, technology in terms of it's a, a harbor has the components of multiple containers. So itself is a microservices architecture, which has all the components are encapsulated inside a container. So when we deploy harbor, it will become a bunch of containers running together to, to form the whole, the, all the capability, provide all the features of Harbor. So basically, you, uh, your, your request come into Harbor, Harbor will direct to different components inside internally and responds to the users. How are you managing, how did you build out that microservices architecture? Tell me a little bit about that. What was your approach? Uh, originally, we used uh, the Docker Compose, which is the simplest way to run multiple containers uh, for an application. So that we started with at a very simple, simplest form, 
and still we still we are still offering such kind of mechanism for people to uh, to deploy and run Harbor. And now as we are moving to the Kubernetes platform, we created another ham chart for people to use ham chart to deploy Harbor on top of Kubernetes, so that we can leverage the capabilities of Kubernetes to manage Harbor. So it's an evolving way, depending on your need. Uh, Docker Compose is a simpler way, but it's a more robust way is for Kubernetes. Docker Compose is the simpler way, yeah. but what are its drawbacks then? Is it not scalable as well? It's not scalable. It's a more, I would say that it's developer quality, and uh, Kubernetes made it production quality. So how is it not scalable? Like what happened, like, uh, you know, what's the proof of that? Um, so basically it just help allow you to deploy and no other things you can do on, the, on top of it. There's no management around it? Yeah, it's just simple command. You can list a few containers, but other than that, you don't, you don't have much out of it. What did you build into the management then? What is it, tell me a little bit about the, the, the approach you took with the management. If Docker Compose is really just focused on that deployment, yeah. what, did you develop in, what did you develop through the management capabilities? Um, for Harbor, is that when you deploy on Kubernetes, then you will have the way to leverage it, all the tools of Kubernetes to monitor the, the, the ports running on, I mean, Harbor, the ports of Harbor running on the Kubernetes, and the performance can be monitored and so on. So there are all, all set of tools that, be, that be, could be leveraged there. Tell me about the monitoring then that, that happens underneath. What are, you know, how are you monitoring, and what are, the, what are the tools you're using for monitoring? So Kubernetes by default, they have their tool like dashboard of Kubernetes. Right. And also there are other projects that are doing monitoring for Kubernetes. By using those tools, you, you automatically have all the capability to monitor Harbor. Because Harbor appears to be a app application on top of Kubernetes platform. So any, any mechanism that you monitor your application on Kubernetes, it can be used for Harbor. That, that's how, how it works. Okay, so the monitoring is, so the monitoring is part of Kubernetes itself. And so the, the, the Harbor application sits on top of that Kubernetes yes. infrastructure and leverages the monitoring capabilities within Kubernetes. Yes, and also other projects also provide the additional monitoring capabilities for Kubernetes. So what are those additional monitoring capabilities? Uh, promises, right? Sorry? That's promises, permissions. Permissions? Promis Prometheus, the, the project's name. Prometheus. Promis Prometheus, yeah, Prometheus, yeah, Prometheus. So you're using Prometheus. We are not, the users will use, because we are not offering Prometheus, but people can use Prometheus to monitor Harbor. Oh, they can use Prometheus they, to yes. monitor Harbor. We are not offering the tool, but yeah. they can right. use the tool. Do, 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 you find that, do you find that happening? Is that, is that? Yes, there's a lot of community Is that users. the choice that people are taking, is uh, using Prometheus? Yes, if they are running the workload on Kubernetes, so for example, Harbor is a workload on Kubernetes, that for me, Prometheus will be useful there mm. for them to, to monitor all the yeah. stuff. Mm. Yeah. So the bottom line is whatever monitoring tools you're using with Kubernetes, you can use to monitor Harbor. Um, because as Henry said, Harbor is running as an application on Kubernetes. Right, so uh, you would monitor the way you would any other application. So with this, this begets, you know, we're talking about microservices and the monitoring of microservices and the deployment and management of microservices. What have you built into it to make that experience, um, you know, a quality one for the developer operations person? Is there a service mesh built into it? Do you, are you, you know, what are you doing, you know, with that to, to kind of make that microservices environment something that people can just use without disrupting too much their own kind of overall practices and approaches? Yeah, I think, you know, there is not service mesh capability within Harbor. I mean, Harbor is, it's a container registry. It's a, it's a place that you can go ahead and store your container images. And so really, uh, what developers, I think, are looking for is to make sure that they've got uh, the security uh, in that environment. And so, and they're also looking for capability, some, some flexibility. So for example, Harbor has the ability to create projects and uh, we mentioned we've got vulnerability scanning, we mentioned that we've got image signing, um, and you can set policy based on projects. So for example, you may have a development project and a production project, and you could set different policies. Um, so for example, in your production project, you may say, um, I want to make sure I'm not able to run any images that have uh, known vulnerabilities greater than moderate. Um, and you can enforce that. Whereas in your development project, you may say, be able to run any images uh, irrespective of the vulnerability scan and results. 
Okay. And so we have that flexibility within Harbor to create different projects and apply policy on a project by project basis. Okay, so how do you do that? How are you providing that? You know, what, tell, tell me about that policy approach that you're taking. Like, um, so basically we uh, uh, allow each, allow all the images will be grouped under a project, under a particular uh, unit called project. And this project, you can have the read, read access, read, read write access, or management access to different roles. Uh, on, on, the, on the images. We call that the role-based access control or, or RBAC. So that for each of the person or user in the, in the harbor system, we assign a particular role to this user. So that you, you have different access to the, to, the, to the images. That's how it works. So it's a role-based environment. Yes, right? role-based access control, yeah. Right. And, the role -based, and you chose that role-based access control for, for what reasons? It's just a, it's more scalable, isn't it? And the roles are well, different, aren't they? It, it's really a requirement for enterprise environments, right? It really is. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you need to have that. Yeah. It, yeah. Know, it's it's, it's table stakes. Yeah. 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 And, and so I think the differentiator is the ability with the projects to create different projects and have different policy thresholds, if you will, on a project by project basis. Um, and so that's one of the, the key uh, key things that I think developers look for. We hear a lot more about policy, like you know how policy and enterprise policy is becoming a much more greater con a greater uh, priority in uh, different open source communities, and but there's more there's the talk discussion we hear about is in the context of of a pipeline. How do you think about the pipeline? Is it you know, as, as, as you get as you're developing your applications, people are thinking about that pipeline, how security is part of that pipeline necessarily. Mm -hmm as opposed to you know, more traditional approaches. How is, I'm curious on like, you know, your philosophy about that. I'm not really an expert in the security aspect of kind of these technologies. So I'm curious on how the pipeline, you know, works or is that just an entirely wrong kind of thinking? So you're talking about a CI pipeline. Yeah, CI, CD pipelines. And, yeah. Cause like container, you know, like if you're using a registry, you're pulling off these, pulling these images, right? Mm -hmm. And you're building them into your application right. development process. You know, there's some there. There's those issues that come up, and you need to have that vulnerability scanning and such. Sure, as part baked in as part of the pipeline to do right. scans on the images. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense that, that people would do that. And in fact, I mean, we see that in practice all the time. Yeah, because the pipeline, you for the CI or CD pipeline, there's many steps of the pipeline. So at a certain a certain phase. The, 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 for example, after you're building the, the, the binaries, you have the way to build a container image and then you store into a container registry. And then the next phase will be take the in container image out of the container registry for the next step in the, into the pipeline. And then the scanning and also other access control will happen during this push and pull, all the process that will be integrated into the pipeline. Okay. So, so tell me then where is, you know, what is this, where is, uh, Where's Harbor right now? What is the status of it now? Is it, it, it just got into, is it, tell me about its role kind of in the open yeah, source community. Yeah, so I mean, we're really excited. Uh, it just got promoted from Sandbox to Incubate uh, at, uh, at the KubeCon conference here in Shanghai. So that was announced earlier this week, um, which is a, a major milestone for us. So we're really excited. And I think it's a, a proof point on the adoption and the, uh, the usefulness and the fact that we've broadened our community since entering the sandbox. Uh, we have more contributors from uh, more locations. Uh, we've added more maintainers to the program and it's really gaining a tremendous amount of momentum as part of the CNCF. And so the, the community development itself, tell me about that. You know, is it, is, this is a VMware project, how are you reaching out to the community? Tell us about yeah. that. Well, actually, it's a CNCF project. It's a CNCF project, it, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a VMware project. We donated to CNCF in July uh, under That's Sandbox, right. and now it's progressed from Sandbox uh, to, uh, to Incubate. And so I think that, you know, that has really helped us to bring in uh, a broader community um, and under the sponsorship of the CNCF, and so it's been really helpful. Yeah, I mean, the Originally, as, as Paul said, right now it is a CNCF project, right? Originally, it was an open source project under VMware before it was donated to CNCF. At that time, we uh, firstly promoted in the Chinese community. So the initial users are Chinese users here in, 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 in China. 
and then gradually the people giving us all the feedbacks and we have a money inter iteration to improve the quality, improve its ca capabilities, and then gradually populate it to the users outside of China. So gradually all the, all the cloud native community around the world. So gradually then probably becomes a global project instead of a, a China local projects. So that by that at a certain point there are many, many users at there and they want the um, harbor to be have a broader adoption. So the the many suggestion I mean on the community said they are donating to the CSF to make it more visibility, uh, make given them more visibility and more uh, reach to the to the broader audience so that uh, the project can grow more uh, in, in more uh, in, in a in a way that is uh, have more users and more uh, and large impact. In the, that's how we how we grow the community. How are you look looking forward? What are the gaps in the harbor technology now that you're looking to fill through the community? What is it that you're looking? What was it those those what is it those those what is it now that you want it? What is it that you want it to be? You know, where you know, what is that what is that progress you need to take so it be becomes something deeper and more Yeah, ultimately um, you know, we're aligned with the CNCF uh, and Kubernetes and I think the vision that we have for Harbor, and of course, you know, I have to say that the vision is at this point, since it's a community-based project, it's the, you know, the community input is going right. to direct where we go with this. But um, where we'd like to see it go is really to be very closely aligned in the best container registry for Kubernetes. And so some of the near-term things that we're tackling, uh, well, one of them, as we mentioned, was Helm charts, and so that's an important uh, functionality. Uh, another one which we uh, delivered recently was the deployment on Kubernetes itself. Um, and the next step in that is an HA deployment on Kubernetes to provide uh, greater availability. Um, and then beyond that, we're looking at scale. Uh, although, you know, Harbor scales to some pretty impressive numbers currently, uh, we're looking to expand that even more. And so ultimately, you know, we feel that by aligning with CNCF, um, it will align Harbor with the needs of the Kubernetes community and really, uh, you know, um, take it down the, the journey that we'd like to see it go in terms of being the best uh, container registry for Kubernetes. Yeah, I, w I would say that, yeah. So tell me then about the scale question. What it, what is it that you that that it that it needs to be bolstered for you know for it to reach that scale that you dream of so to speak? Yeah. Well, I think you know right now for most of enterprise needs the scale is there, um, and so you know Henry can tell you we've got some uh, very large customers that are serving up you know tens of thousands of, of container images. Yes. Um, however, you know we're getting some feedback that we'd like to see. Uh, better replication um, and perhaps uh, clustering capability. And so those are some of the things that we're looking at. Of course, we're getting input from the community to see exactly what implementation they're, they're looking for. Yeah, in terms of, to, to, to add to Paul's uh, comments, that in terms of the scale that we do see a very large scale users out there, like the JD.com and China Mobile. Um, but, but they usually they have some of their own customization on Harbor to achieve that scalability. That means that in our project, we may need some um, way to do it for all the people, not everybody doing their own customization. So we may need to improve on that, in on that direction. Yeah, and so you may see customers and users with multiple deployments of Harbor, um, and then load balancing in front of those, for, for example. Um, and so another approach would be to create a cluster architecture within Harbor itself so that you could serve it up from a single instance of Harbor as opposed to serving up images from a multiple, uh, multiple instances of Harbor. Ah, uh, clustered right. architecture, tell me about that. Yeah. Henry, do you wanna? Yeah, so yeah, in a cluster environment, basically you can install a few instances of Harbor. They're sharing the same storage underneath so that when the request comes in, they will be low balanced to different uh, harbor instances and serving the requests. So okay. that way, yeah. Is that the high availability, does, does that allow for better high availability? Better scale. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. better scale, yeah. In some sense, it's also solved the uh, high availability problem too. Yeah. How are you managing the persistence in that kind of environment? Um, so well, what we find is a lot, of, uh, a lot of users would prefer to manage the persistence themselves. And so using uh, Allowing Harbor to uh, to bind external persistence uh, data stores um, is one of the, the approaches that we're taking. Yeah, I mean the the user environment varies 
where they have very really different environments. So in each each of the organization, they have their own way of sharing storage. So some of some some of the some like have the uh, share uh, uh, self FS, and some of them may have, for example, we have, VMware customer that we send. So they will have different storage. So Harvard does not touch that layer, but we just use whatever the user provide to us. Is there? Do you have any container storage capability then built into that? Uh, I mean, container. I mean, we're there's there's a new kind of generation of you know capabilities for managing state that you know you see from companies out in the space you, you know who are not managing the physical storage itself but they're managing the container images across you know across the environment so portworks for example storage os for example you know, yeah open source i'm sure there's a and that the open source approaches to that you know yeah, and, and so that focus is not so much on you know the images themselves, right? It's on application data, right? And so uh, our needs are a little bit different with Harbor, where we're storing uh, the image data or the, the images themselves. Okay, so it's the storage of the image data itself, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So in that sense, we are, we don't have a. a particular requirement on the storage, just whatever the storage that user feel they like, that we just supply to Harbor. Yeah. And so Harbor typically, user. you know, um, users will have some th sort of S3 compatible storage, and so for example, Harbor has the capability to consume S3 compatible storage, ah. and so the images would be stored there. Now, I'm curious, how does this fit into the larger story that we're hearing from VMware? I mean, because that gets to like, you know, now I'm starting to put the pieces together. I know I've been a little bit slow in this interview, <laughs> but tell me about how this fits together with all the pieces. Because like when I was at VMworld earlier this year, I uh, you know had some conversations, you know, about um, um, AWS on VMware, for example, mm -hmm. um, and the uh, and there was you know discussions about how you think about hybrid ar these hybrid architectures and mm -hmm. how you can be capability to deploy across multiple architectures. How does this fit into that overall story? I guess it, I can see it, you know, how container, you know, the container story does fit, but I'm just curious on like how you guys piece it together. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, RDS on, yeah. on vSphere yeah. that was yeah. announced yeah. Uh, at VMworld in Las Vegas, yeah. So I think you know the way that uh, that Harbor fits into this, and again, it's important to note that Harbor, even though it was originated by VMware, is a community-based yeah. ba project. Um, but you know, we do leverage Harbor in uh, a couple of our products. We uh, leverage it in in, uh, in PKS, VMware PKS, which is our Kubernetes offering. Uh, we also offer it in vSphere integrated containers, and so um, you know, it it ties into the overall. Uh, you know, multi-cloud story, hybrid cloud, um, and so it's a key part of a couple products that we have within the uh, VMware family. How are other, so what are some of the other ways you're seeing customers use it? Like are there any clear use cases that come to mind and how companies are applying Harbor right now? I mean, it's early days. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the number one use case is, uh, you know, it's a container Security. registry, yeah. right? It's a, a place where you can securely store, manage, access your container images for use on, on Kubernetes and, and Docker. Um, and so that is really the, the prime use case for, uh, for Harbor. And uh, again, you know, customers are interested in uh, security, they're interested in availability, they're interested in scale, um, and Harbor provides all those capabilities. Well, Henry, thank you very much. Congratulations! It's a. It's, I know that you've worked quite a bit on this, you know, on, on this project, and it's and it must be gratifying to see where it is right now. So, congratulations on okay, that. Okay, thank you. I think that the whole team will be very proud, proud, proud of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations to your team. That, okay. That's quite an accomplishment. And Paul, it's great to see you again, and thank you very much. Great seeing you, Alex. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. This episode of the Newstack Makers is sponsored by Raygun. Raygun provides full stack error crash and performance monitoring for tech teams. If you're concerned you're losing customers to poor quality online experiences, Raygun provides you with the answers. Raygun surfaces errors and performance problems into a dashboard that gives you the actionable information you need to solve them before they reach your customers. Raygun has created a special offer for the Newstack listeners. 
Head to raygun.com forward slash TNS to get up and running and claim your free gift today. Listen to more episodes of The New Stack Makers at thenewstack.io slash podcasts. Please rate and review us on iTunes, like us on YouTube, and follow us on SoundCloud. Thanks for listening and see you next time.